Hello and welcome to Doubling in Journals and today I'm going to be working in my regular size Camel's Travellers Notebook from Travellers Company and also my little bitty Camel Travellers Notebook. So I'm going to start with the big one and we're going to work in the vertical insert first. I'll move on to my focus of the week and then I'll finish off with a spread in my teeny tiny journal. So let's get straight to it. So these are the cards that I drew last week and I want to decorate this page and I've picked out this beautiful pet tape that I always gifted in a happy mail and I think this is really lovely so I thought I would use this one. I've also picked out some washi tapes that I think look really nice with it. I hope you agree and these are both from Note and Wish. And the pattern on them is little white flowers and I thought those two colours looked nice. I've also pulled out, just in case I want to use them, some Versamagic ink. And I like this ink, I, I think I've said before, because it doesn't bleed through the paper. And the colours that I have here are wheat, that's the kind of beigey brown one, and aloe vera, which is a green. So let's get started. Now, I've pulled up these stickers. I cannot remember where I got these, but they are stickers of sort of warm paper, which I think are really cool. So I'm going to use one of these to start off my collage. And this is a piece I've already ripped because I've used the rest of the sticker. And I'm just distressing the edges where I've ripped it to make it look worn all the way round. I need to try and work out where I got these because I think they're really cool. It'll either be Amazon or Etsy, I think. There we go. And I'm not, I'm trying to decide how I want to put it. I think like that. Okay. And then I also have this lovely paper that was gifted to me in a happy mail. So I'm going to take a piece of this out and just add a little torn piece of this one. I love the lovely soft fuzzy edges you get on this kind of paper. And I'm going to pop that there. And then I'm going to add this lovely girl sticker. Can we get my little bulb in? I really love the colours of this, the, the sort of really light green and light beigey brown. It's just beautiful. Where am I going to put her? Perfect fit. <laughs> it was like it was made for it. And I'm thinking I might use that little flower there. And I'm going to add a bit of something there in a minute. I want to put some washi tape down and I think I'm going to go this way with the washi tape. I'm going to put a little bit here and up here. And then I'm going to take some of this colour. And I think I'll tear this. Right, now I'm going to decide, do I want this big piece here? But do I want to put it on that white page or do I want to put it on that? I think it looks more delicate and pretty just on the white page. Oh, I've got it slightly crinkled. 
it's any trouble when you're lying down big pieces. There we go. And I'm going to carry on with this washi tape. That would look nice there. And I think that went up there. And I've kind of got this idea of just taking one pet tape and using it as the basis for the decoration from snippets and scraps. She, her spreads always look so elegant and cohesive. And this is one of the ways she achieves that. <laughs> right, I've got just these two little flowers left. Where shall I pop them? I want to keep them somewhere. I don't think they would look good there. Maybe there. I'm really liking how this spread is looking so far. It's so gentle and calming <laughs> it is to me anyway and now i just want to do a little bit of stamping so i think i'm going to choose one of these splashes because i quite like these splashes Maybe this one, I think I used before, but I did like it. So the question is, what colour? What colour? I think I'm going to go with the beige and see what that looks like. And of course, if you stamp something and you don't like it, you can always cover it with a sticker. Oh, that is really subtle, isn't it? It's a really pale colour, but I quite like that. I'm going to do another one there. Oh, I've done that thing where it's too near the middle of the stump. I've given, as you can see, I've given up using baby wipes to clean things in my journaling and crafting space just because it seems that reusable ones would be better for the environment. And I'm really getting on well with these little cloths. They're just like little face wipes. And as you can see, it looks gross, but I do wash it out. I just rinse it in the sink and it's just stained from the watercolour paint. Now, just to finish off, I feel like I want something in there because that looks like a frame to me. Maybe I should have put something underneath. Now, what could I put there? I'm just wondering about one of these. I think they may be too big. There was some, oh, there's a small one. Yeah, she looks nice in there. I think I'm going to grab her. I really love this page I don't know why 
<laughs> it must just be it's because the stickers are so beautiful. So I'm happy with that page and I'm going to call that page done and I'm going to move on to my focus of the week and then we'll finish up with a teeny tiny journal. So last week, oh yes, the card that I picked was the page of wands. So let me give you that to have a look at. And we've got there the image of a woman and she seems to be engulfed in flames and is holding flames. She's looking very calm, um, not distressed at all. But anyway, the thing that I focused on, I took this quotation out of the guidebook, which said, a young person, creative and passionate, but often quite defensive, needs appreciation and understanding, but may find it impossible to ask for help often a loner and that of course made me think about teenagers and as I have a teenage son myself he's 15 then this is something that I often think about in terms of thinking about whether he's happy whether he's coping with all the changes and stresses that occur during teenage years and I was looking up some of the scientific explanations for teenage behaviour as teens continue to develop, the emotional area of the brain, the amygdala, develops sooner than the part of the brain needed for self-control and decision-making and rational thinking, which is the prefrontal cortex. Now, in fact, in teenagers, according to the source that I'm using, and I've owned, it's a BBC source, so I'm hoping it's reliable, it says that the prefrontal cortex actually loses grey matter in adolescence. Now, this sounds a little bit worrying, but they suggest that it can be thought of as pruning a plant to promote better growth. So the teenager whose body is being flooded with hormones that they're learning to experience and cope with and which aren't sort of settled as they need to be. So they've got that. And at the same time, the amygdala is growing fast and that's the emotional part of the brain, whilst the prefrontal cortex, which is all about the rational thinking, is lagging behind and pruning itself. So as a result, it's much more common for teenagers to engage in emotional or emotionally driven behaviours or risk taking behaviours because the driving emotions overtake the rational thinking and so so teenage behavior can be explained in terms of the changes that are happening in the brain so i for me that makes me feel that i need to be super vigilant extra careful so that i can help my teenager get through this aspect of growing up which can be so challenging especially with all the stresses they have they have school and exams and peer group pressures and concerns about their future i know my son is already thinking about what am i going to do in my future i've got to make choices about courses to follow at school and so on and so this week i was just focusing on trying to think of ways in which I can be as supportive as possible for my son as he goes through his adolescent developments. So that's what that card made me think of. I was a bit surprised that that's what came out of it, but it was. So let us now move on and pick a new card. So I'm going to just get a clean page. I'm going to do that thing, aren't I, where I clip it and then I unclip it. And I've decided to change deck. In fact, I've already changed deck because we're now on Wednesday. So I've already pulled cards from this deck on Monday and Tuesday. A really beautiful deck. It's called The Lantern Oracle by Angelina Mirabito. I don't know if that's how you say it. And it's illustrated by Yuli Alejo. So... Let's have a look and see what we card we get from this lovely deck. They're really huge cards. I've coloured in the edges black to match the borders. And I think that looks nice. I haven't made a bag for this one yet. But I'm just going to give it a shuffle. And we'll see what card I get to focus on this week. I'm feeling really tired today. I don't know if you can tell I'm not that chatty, am I? Because, <laughs> well, I was just now, but I wasn't in the first part of the video. Because I'm tired, I didn't sleep well. Right, let's see what card we get. 
Oh, look at her. And it's number card number 13, and it's called False Beliefs. Once the untruth that we believe about ourselves are illuminated, so are the ways we can release the false limitations they confine us to. Very deep and profound. And so I've got lots that I could pick to focus with that card. But just for now, looking at the artwork, absolutely love the owl. So she's got wisdom there because an owl is usually a sign of wisdom, isn't it? So she's got wisdom sitting on her shoulder, which is very helpful. And I don't know what these are. They're horns, obviously, of some kind. I love the light over the top of her, which is very ethereal, isn't it? And she's got that very sort of like fantasy type clothing on. It feels like she's looking straight at me. <laughs> so I like the colours too. So I've got some nice colours to work with today. So let's see what I can find. I'm going to go, I think, would that go or is that too orange? I've got that. I think that one's better. Okay, so I think these colours look really nice with that card. She's got a really nice dark olivey green outfit on. Okay, so I'm just grabbing some watercolours because I don't have any paper in that really dark olivey green, but I do have some paint. So I thought I'd put a little bit of paint on the corner. Should I do her in the corner or on the side? I think I'll do a corner. So I'm going to just start with a little bit of paint, which I think I'll just do in like a triangle. I want it to get a bit darker. Okay, so I let that dry before I put some paper on it. So I'm just going to tear some little bits of paper. I really like this paper. It's like textured paper. And a little bit of this one, I think. I think maybe something like that. Just going to grab some ink for this little piece here. Okay, so let's get sticking. There, so just collaging some little scraps. And then I'm going to take some of this like pale beige ink that I already have out and my stamps and I'm going to just stamp some, some splashes. That's a cool one. I think one down there. Lovely. And then I need something to be the focal point. Let's clean off my stamp. I really wish I had an owl sticker, but I don't think I do. I'm just going to check. got a mushroom that's tempting because that 
it's just really earthy with those pieces that looks nice doesn't it i might use that that's my lovely little pouch made of paper <laughs> Oh, it's, um, what do you call it, a washi sticker. Okay, and I think I'm just going to paint. I'm going to put some of the matching paint on the top corner. So that when I stick the card on it makes like a little border and ties in together and I don't know if I said this colour is Green Appetite Genuine by Daniel Smith one of the Primatech colours oh it's just I just think it's such a gorgeous colour <laughs> I love olive green that's why I love the olive Traveller's Notebook so much I think this is my second favourite colour after orange. I think I've just painted another page. There we go. Now I keep my little printer for my journals in this pouch here. So it's a little padded pouch and then I can keep my printer and also the spare papers for it in here and I was just showing you because I wanted to show you where I put one of my pins so this is one of the pins Dawn sent to me and it's from London Gifties a coffee cup I think it's absolutely gorgeous and it just screamed to go on this pouch I thought because the colours match so well with the yellow and the powder blue and the brown and white so I just thought it was absolutely perfect for this pouch and I really, really love having it on there. Really hoping I don't lose it. I try to be really careful every time I take things in and out. Right, so now I'm going to print this photograph. Okay, printed my little photo of my card. And I want to put this up in this corner. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of this paper. Just distress it again. And make a sort of slightly smaller collage in the opposite corner. And just a little bit. Giving it a lovely fluffy torn edge. Oh, it's broke. Where should we go there? And I've put my little photograph and do you know I'm happy I'm happy with my spreads today so that's good <laughs> okay is that dry yeah so the two spreads I did today were this one and this one 
And just to finish off, before I go, I'm going to do a little spread in my little itty bitty journal. So this little tiny guy, look how small it is next to my regular. <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to have a go in this one. So let's open it up. And the little cover and the last spread I did in here, so tiny. Now let's see if I can clip it. There we go. And I thought today I would do a coffee spread, so I'm just grabbing my regular brown traveller's notebook, which has got lots of bits and pieces in and stickers and such like. Look how fat it's getting, guys. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure using a lightweight insert with so many pages in it was the best idea. So I might change insert when this one's finished. And I'm really looking forward to the fact that my next video is going to be memory keeping in my brown traveller's notebook which I really really love to do and then we can have a catch up and you can find out all the trivial and uninteresting and unexciting things I have been doing. <laughs> now there's a temptation for you to come back and watch again. <laughs> right let's have a look and see. I've got some particular stickers in mind which I'm pretty sure are in here yeah. So in this little tiny little tiny notebook we need little tiny stickers and I've got these ones that Louise sent me and these ones that Mel sent me I think I've already used some of these so I could go for a coffee or fox so I think I'm going to go for coffee first and let's have a look how shall we decorate this page so I'm still using the Tim Holtz distressed ink in vintage photo and I think that look nice with a coffee theme so let's just ink it up a bit and make it look nice and aged okay so then that I think I'm going to use one of these little frames and then I then one of these stickers says I need a cup of coffee so I think that would be good for the first page you'll have to go over the middle that's fine so should we stick with this distress ink put it up towards the top There we go. That's kind of cool. Let's see if it's gone through. No, <laughs> that's good. So I'm going to take the sticker which says I need a cup of coffee. And we can just go across the page. It'll bend, but that's okay. Just grabbing some coffee colour bits of washi tape and I'm going to add a little bit of washi tape. And then a little bit of this one. like so and then I'm going to pick a coffee cup and I like that one so I'm going with that one because it looks like a cappuccino which is my favorite as long as it's not too big love shops do huge cappuccinos I really dislike those I mean I usually have to have an extra shot anyway to feel happy <laughs> with, with coffee when I'm in a cafe but when they do those enormous cups and just put too much milk in a cappuccino it feels like a latte to me then I feel sad because I like my coffee strong <laughs> I'm, 
underneath that. It was leaning that way, and now it's leaning the other way. I give up. <laughs> right. And then we've got some cool little coffee beans. But before I use those, I want to use my little Kiwi Penguin coffee bean stamp. So let's go there and there. And I'm going to add some of these little tiny coffee beans. If I can. Actually, I might put those in the frame like that. And I think I'm going to put one up there. So tiny, so tiny and fiddly. <laughs> it's so small and cute. And I'm wondering if there's anything else I might want to add. I'm just wondering whether to stamp some little grasses. I think I will. Just using the same colour ink, just add some sort of more texture. Don't want too much blank space. I'm getting in a bit of a pickle here. <laughs> you can't hold it, it's too small. <laughs> I don't have a clue whether that will have worked. Oh, it did. Oh, I actually really like that. So that's my little teeny tiny coffee spread. And next time I'll probably do a foxy spread. <laughs> this is going to be so cool to flip through once it's all full up of little things. Trying to make each page look a little bit different. Do let me know in the comments if you have a miniature traveller's notebook or journal that you're having fun with. Because I'd love to know. And I am going to leave you there and say thank you very much for watching. And I will see you very soon with a memory keeping video. Bye.